Oh, hi. I was just trying to figure out how electricity works. I mean, I know it goes into this light bulb to make it work, but where does it come from? And what is electricity really? Well, I know it must travel down through here into this wire. Yeah, it comes from this wire. And then this wire comes along the whole way to here. The wire plugs into the wall, but that leads to another wire that goes in here. And where does that wire go? Aha! It comes in here and then up here. It keeps going. Where does it go to next? We followed the cable the whole way to this box. Then it seems to go through this scary looking stuff along here and outside. Aha! It goes the whole way over to here. And then it goes way off into the distance. Let's see where it goes. Okay, so we followed the wires the whole way to here and they join up with these even bigger wires. But where do they go? They go way across the fields, way into the distance. So where do the wires lead to? Let's follow them the whole way to the end and try and figure out. I wonder where they go to. I mean, they have to end somewhere, right? If we drive far enough and we keep on following them, we have to figure out where they end up. Whoa! What happened? The car just stopped. What happened? Why did it stop? We're trying to do some serious science here. Ah, oh, we reached our two kilometer limit. I forgot we're in quarantine. Oh, we can't go any further. We're just gonna have to We'll have to go back to the house and we'll have to do a thought experiment. We'll have to use the old noggins and figure it out for ourselves. So let's do that. Okay, so we weren't able to follow the wires right to the end because they went outside our two kilometer limit. That's a shame, but we won't let that stop us. We're gonna figure out where electricity comes from and also what electricity actually is. Let's think about that part first. What is electricity? I mean, we know it powers things in our house, turns off and on lights, runs our radios, our phones, our TVs, but what is it? Take a moment there, chat to the person beside you or have a think to yourself, maybe pause the video. What do you think electricity actually is? Well, did you come up with some good ideas? Hope you had some good discussions. So uh, I think a lot of people have an understanding that electricity flows. It's some sort of a flow, like how water flows, but not quite. Yeah, people understand that electricity kind of flows through wires and comes and powers their devices. Turns on the lights, turns on the radio, the TV, your laptop, whatever. But what do we mean by that, the electricity flows? Well, if we look inside an electrical wire. This is one that's completely disconnected, so I know it's safe to touch. We can see that we have some sort of metal right in the middle of our wires. We have rubbery surface here, more rubbery stuff, and then there's metal on the inside. So if the metal carries the electricity, but the electricity flows, how does that work? How can the metal flow? It's not liquid, it's not melted, it's solid metal. Well, if we really want to understand this, we need to think back to our earlier episodes. We need to think back about atoms. Remember what an atom was? We should all remember that atoms have this positively charged protons in the middle, and then they're orbited by these little negatively charged electrons going round and round. Now there's a clue in the name here, electrons. The electrons are responsible for electricity. Okay, electricity is just a flow of electrons. Okay, so that's what's flowing. It's the electrons that flow, not the atoms of metal themselves. Okay, but 
how is this electricity, some flowing electrons, why does that make things light up and make things go? Well, you might remember that we said that electrons carry a charge, kind of like either end of a magnet, yeah? We said they're kind of like just one end of a magnet. So you can imagine these electrons moving through the wires are kind of like loads and loads of tiny little magnets moving through the wires. It's not exactly the same, but it's a good approximation. So imagine a little wire that had loads and loads of these tiny little magnets moving around. They could do all sorts of work for us. They could attract things, they could push things, make forces, and that's kind of useful, isn't it? So all our electrical devices are able to make use of these tiny little forces from these charges moving around. Pretty cool, huh? So how can we make all these electrons flow in these lines through these metal wires? How does that actually work? Well, there's a particular type of metal we use in these wires. It's called copper. And if we look at the atoms of copper, we'll notice something very particular about them. Let's take a look at a copper atom. Now we can see that a copper atom has one electron right on the edge of the atom just on its own, one electron all on its own. Now that's very important. It means that it's quite easy if a positive charge comes by, a big positive charge comes by, it's able to pull that electron away from its atom. It wouldn't be so easy if it was held more tightly to the atom, but those ones on the edge can easily be pulled away by a positive charge. Now imagine we have a line of copper atoms, one after the other after the other, just like in a long wire, we'd have millions of copper atoms. Well, if we pull the electron away from an atom on one of them, yeah, with our positive charge, well, that's going to leave a little hole behind. And that means the next electron can jump in there and fill that. And then the next electron can jump in and fill that hole, and so on and so forth. And you can see now you kind of get an idea of how we can maybe get some sort of a flow. Yeah, it's kind of like a conga line. Well, to get into this in a little bit more detail and understand how this actually works in an electrical circuit, we need to understand two words when talking about electricity. They're called voltage and current. Now, to explain those, I'm going to use a water-based thought experiment. So, a thought experiment is just, you think about a scenario and you use your logical mind to figure out what would happen. So, I'm going to imagine a scenario where we have a water pump. Yeah. And that water pump pumps water yeah? it pumps it into pipes and those pipes go round and round in a loop and back into the other end of the pump. So we can imagine that the pump turns round and round, it pushes the water and it keeps going around and back in and then back again, round and round and round in a loop. So we call this type of loop a circuit when it goes round and round. Now we can use this to understand electricity. What we're going to understand is instead of a pump we're going to use a battery. Imagine that, a battery instead of a pump. Now a battery always has a negative terminal and a positive terminal. Positive and negative, just like the two ends of a magnet, very similar. Now if instead of those pipes we imagine wires, yeah, and instead of that flow of, of, of water we're going to have this flow of electricity, okay, so think about that same scenario. Now a battery always has a voltage, this is called a 9 volt battery. And that represents basically how strong the pump would be. Yeah, if you had a really strong pump, it would push a lot of water. If you had a weak pump, it would only push a little bit of water. So a 9 volt battery is going to push less electricity around than a 90 volt battery would. Okay? So we have this voltage is positive and negative. Now the negative part yeah, is going to push. It's going to push away any electrons because we know that the negatives push the other negatives. The positives part is going to attract electrons because we know that opposites are attracted with charges. So that means those electrons are going to get pulled into the battery from one end and pushed away from the battery on the other end. And every time we pull one of those little electrons from the copper, we're going to leave a little hole behind. And this is how we're able to keep going with this flow of electricity. So you can see those copper atoms stay exactly where they are, the metal doesn't flow, but they're able to push the electrons from one to the other to the other to the other. And this way we get a flow of electrons going round and round and round. And that flow of electrons is electricity. Okay, so now we understand how a battery is able to push electrons through a wire, and that is electricity. So let's go back to our earlier question. 
what's going on at the end of those long wires? If we had been able to go outside our two kilometer radius, what would we have found? A giant battery at the end of those wires? Well, actually, no, it's not a giant battery. We would have found a power plant. Now, a power plant is a place where they're able to generate electricity without using batteries. So how can they do that? Well, believe it or not, it all comes down to magnets. If I take a magnet and move it near a copper wire, just like this, I just move the magnet near the wire. Remember that one end of the magnet is negative, the other end is positive, just like our electrons. So if I move the negative end near the wire, I'm going to push those electrons and they're going to push along, just like when they were pushed by the battery. So if I just do this, I'm able to generate electricity but it's going to be a very small amount of electricity, not enough to power your house. What they do in power plants is they build something like this. Now, I already showed this briefly in an earlier video, but I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. What I have here is a magnet. See the blue and the red ends? I have a magnet that I can turn around and around and around and around and around, just like so. And wrapped around this is a big coil of copper wire. So that means I'm now moving my magnet inside the copper wire really fast and it's a lot more efficient than just moving it beside the wire. So if you do this you're constantly pushing those electrons round and around and around and that's all they're doing in a power plant. If you follow that wire the whole way to the end you'd find magnets spinning round and around and around and around and those spinning magnets just push the electrons through the wires the whole way across the country, the whole way across those fields, right the way around the house through the ceiling all the way around here, up through here, through this wire, the whole way to my lamp to turn it on. And if those magnets stop turning, the light will turn off. So that's what's at the end of those wires. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a thing or two about what electricity actually is and where it comes from and what's at the end of those big long wires. Just one last thing to say guys, remember that electricity can be very, very dangerous. So don't ever go touching wires or taking apart stuff unless you're with an adult who knows what they're doing. So thanks so much for tuning in guys and I'm already looking forward to seeing you on the next one.